very rare that uh, people uh, tend to agree with Charles Barkley. I gotta say, I agree with him on this one thing. Chris Paul is an MVP candidate. And people will be like, well, no. Chris Paul is averaging about uh, 17 points and uh, nine assists per game. The Suns last season were 10th in the West. They're second in the West. Now, I know injuries play a big role, but the fact that they're second in the West with teams like the Portland Trailblazers, Dallas Mavericks, Denver Nuggets, all teams are supposed to be better than them, and they're sitting and boasting a better record. That speaks to something. But let's play devil's advocate. If there was Steve Nash with the Phoenix Suns, back when he was winning back-to-back -back MVPs, averaging like 14 points and 10 assists, would they not say Steve Nash is an MVP candidate? You guys gotta remember, he wasn't averaging 25 and this, 16 and 10, 16 and 12. Was he not an MVP candidate? Oh yeah, he was. He won back-to-back -back MVPs over Kobe and Shaq. And we know for a fact that Kobe and Shaq were better players. However, the likability factor, their reputations at the time, Kobe with the whole, you know, with his case and everything, guys, Chris, the only reason why Chris Paul, people aren't really considered an MVP candidate, is because they don't like him. And this is what bothers me about the whole MVP race. Every, every, every time it changes. No, it's just about the guy who's most popular, most valuable to your team. Without you, your team doesn't work. Chris Paul has like the highest plus minus on his team. Without him, the team doesn't work. Okay, now they switch the criteria. Really, what it's really about is wins. See, MVP always goes to the team with like the most wins or high wins. Guys, Phoenix Suns are 10th. Now they're second in the West. That's the second best record in the Western Conference. So he yeah, does have a good record. No, no, it's no longer a fact about being the most valuable for your team. It's not about the record. It's about popularity. You know, it's about who's getting the most votes. And that's where he loses the argument. And that's why people, and that's an argument people don't make. People don't t tend to say like, hey, the MVP is just basically a popularity contest and voter fatigue plays, plays a role. Cause there's a lot of guys that didn't win the MVP because people were just tired of voting for him or people didn't like them. Shaq, before Steph Curry got the unanimous MVP, Shaq almost got the unanimous MVP and he didn't get unanimous MVP because of a, a writer that had a boat that was a writer in Orlando, Florida, where Shaq left the Orlando Magic hanging. You think his reputation and what, how he went to LA didn't factor in to Shaq not winning unanimous MVP? If you say no, I know there's something wrong with you in the head. I know there's something you need to go see somebody. You need to get that checked. Of course it did. As opposed to Steph, he was like the darling of the league. Not to take away anything from Steph because he had one of the most epic he probably had the best offensive season of all time, period, for a regular season. You know, somebody could have still said, like, hey, James Harden, but this, this, you get what I'm saying. Somebody could have still argued that against him, and nobody did because he was, he was likable. Chris Paul is just not likable. Kenya Martin alluded to this. Um, I believe Matt Barnes alluded to this. It's like Chris Paul, people don't trust him. Like They feel like he's like a politician, and that's why he just doesn't get the love that he deserves. And what's going to be crazy is when he retires, and you watch all this old stuff, you're gonna watch all the old footage, you're gonna see him in New Orleans, you're gonna see him with the Clippers, you're gonna see what, doing, what he did in Houston. All the teams, he helped them get to a certain point. And like, to me, I feel like it's unfair for him not to win it, to have a championship right now. But this goes to my theory where I feel like point guards can't be your, your key person to always win you a championship. You need somebody that comes along with them because point guards, they're smaller in stature. They have a lot more responsibilities as opposed to like a star player, a small forward, a shooting guard, or a center. Like point guards have way too much responsibility for you to put the onus on them to bring you home to win a title. Yeah, it could be done, but you, you need a, a big system to push them behind them. And I feel like with Chris Paul, like when he got injured in Houston, there was, that blew his title chance. When he was in with the Clippers, they didn't win. I didn't understand that. Because I feel like the team was good enough. I do feel like he did over dribble sometimes. But 
he was too good, and I felt like the other guys just didn't step up when they needed to be, or hot, scream on them when they needed to, like, give me the ball, throw me the ball. With Chris Paul, at the end of the day, it just boils down to likability factor. Because when you look at all his highlights, his PER, all this other crazy stuff, you're gonna be like, damn, this is one of the greatest point guards to ever play the game. But the fact that he he's not an MVP candidate, it just goes to the bigger problem that he has. He's nobody just like nobody likes him. Who's your show? Who's Hoopla? Like, comment, subscribe.